Hi everyone. How do you distinguish between a junction like this, like we've got in front of us, where we can't see anything, and something that's really open and it is clear? Well, to most drivers who've been driving for many years, it's a simple task of just observing on the approach and we work it out. But poor drivers and drivers who are learning, um, my students for example, do have problems distinguishing between what to do on the approach to different junctions. So today, we're gonna have a look at it. As usual, I'm forever adapting my teaching. And it's not necessarily something that's new that I'm gonna talk about today, but I've just found a different way to put it across. Um, many learner drivers um, are naturally taught things about open and closed junctions and um, what you should do on the approach. But to be honest, I tend to find that this goes out the window. Um, I've done many videos um, mentioning arrive then look where people just tend to stare at the giveaway line in front of them, get there and then try and work out what to do and it just causes all kinds of panic, uh, anxiety, um, reactiveness as opposed to planning. So this is what I'm going to try and do today, I'm going to try and explain how um, I've discovered how to teach this in a little bit better way, so it might be useful for um, learner drivers, it might be useful for other instructors to maybe try this approach with your pupils. Um, it might be useful for some people on the road who um, aren't as confident as maybe they should be um, to try and implement this. So what I'm talking about is I've put different approaches into four different stages a b c and d and the first stage that i'd like to talk about if or is if you're approaching something that you probably know it's going to be clear um, for example uh, a big open roundabout very little traffic on it maybe um, it's at a quiet time of the day maybe first thing on a Saturday morning um, when there's not much traffic about what you would do with something like that is be able to decide on the approach that it's going to be okay and you should choose a gear and engage it the gear that you choose should be suitable for the sharpness of the corner okay so that's stage A Stage B, which is a little bit more problematic, you might approach something and think, well, I'm not sure whether it's going to be clear. Now, you can't do exactly the same thing as we mentioned in the previous stage. You've got more risk, so what you really need to do is go a little bit slower. So what I would probably advise in something like that is to keep braking. Slow it down maybe a little bit more, but you do need to choose a gear in preparation. So, um, you'd probably get second and then hedge your bets a little bit. Okay, and that's sort of what I'm doing here until that vehicle put the signal on and I knew what was what. There's a further stage as well that is even more problematic where you're approaching a roundabout or a junction or anything and you categorically know that it's uh, a lot, lot busier and you're probably not going to be able to go. Well, I'm just going to deal with this one. This one's that hedge the bets. Oh no, now I've cycled down to, um, it was probably not going to be clear. And notice what I did there was I slowed it right down to a creep and got into first gear. Didn't necessarily stop. I did my braking early enough to be able to then keep things moving. So I went from that uh, staged approach B down to C I slowed it down more and went into first gear and there is another stage after um, stage C it's obviously stage D but it's when you're approaching not necessarily a roundabout like we had there but possibly a set of traffic lights where you distinctively know you're not going to be able to go 
the lights are on red, perhaps there's 10 cars in front of you, perhaps there's a queue. Well, all you do in that scenario and situation is just get there, stop, and probably secure your car and select neutral. So what I'm going to do over the next little bit is just try and explain how I'm thinking of these stages on the approach. Now I'm going to take the next road on the left, so I'm doing my preparation. Um, there's a little side entrance, so I'm only going to put the signal on now. But we can see by this, there's no pedestrians actually using this road, so it's stage A. I'm probably going to be able to continue. So I'm picking a gear appropriate, second in this case, and then I'm able to flow round really important to look super far round into this road to try and work out what to do. Too many people just look at a little piece of tarmac in front of them. Oh, let's have a look at the catering. That's lovely. I'll have one of them. Um, yeah, too many people look at the little space in front of them as opposed to looking how sharp the corner is. And that little space, that little piece of tarmac in front of you doesn't tell you anything, to be honest. So I'm going to do the same. Um, I'm going to take the second road on the right, the next one coming up now. Um, so, on the approach, I've got a hedge my bets a little here, just in case someone came from the other side. So I'm going for second, but then I didn't necessarily bring the clutch up and get it engaged and get it working straight from the off, because we had that added danger of that bend coming from the opposite way. So I couldn't guarantee that it was going to be clear. It didn't look probable that it was going to be clear. There was a little bit more risk. So notice how I changed what I was doing. We'll look at a couple of other junctions. Um, I'm going to head down to the bottom and have a little go at a T junction at the end. So we've done a couple of turns, both left and right. I'm going to do an emerge down at the bottom of this road and then we're going to go off and um, have a little look at a couple of roundabouts and then a couple of other things a little touch further. So with an emerge you don't really know a lot of the time until you are there whether it's clear or not but they're not all like that and this is generally the mistake and where it comes from that I find students make. On the approach to this junction I'm going to turn right and all um, novice drivers and poor drivers do is stare at this giveaway line. This giveaway line tells me nothing of what to do. It's what's happening to the right and what's happening to the left. So it's probably not going to be clear. So I'm going to choose first and creep. And what I mean by probably not, I couldn't make my decision at a high enough speed to be able to really safely emerge in any higher gear than second or than first gear. So that's why we got it really slow and crept. Roundabouts by design are a lot more open. They're there to keep traffic flowing. So rarely will you need to go down into first gear unless possibly you're doing a right turn at a mini roundabout that's really sharp and you've got to go around the back of it. Or again, if you see something that tells you it's not going to be clear and there's plenty of traffic. So most of the time, you're going to be either in stage A where you're choosing a gear because you know it's clear or you're hedging your bets and you may be in second and just going mm, not sure and just using your brake to try and engineer a gap. So we'll have a little look at this roundabout and again all roundabouts are different you can't get into a habit of choosing a particular gear for a particular roundabout they are all different at different times that you approach and I could do this one now and then five minutes later I'd have to do something utterly different so um, don't get into that routine. So on the approach to this one, I'm already assessing on how fast other vehicles are going on. The orange ones had to go really, really slow. So that's maybe making me think I might have to go a little bit slower myself, but I'm assessing what I can see. I'm hedging my bets in second, just for the white one, and I'm able then to flow on. Easy enough. So effectively what I'm getting at is approaching a junction 
you're thinking of what's probably going to happen before you get there as opposed to reacting so at the moment with the traffic lights up ahead this is the first time that uh, we're gonna have a little look at stage D stage D is obviously where it's not gonna be clear um, and even here I'm cycling now to stage C to put it into first and creep because the lights have changed and the cars are starting to move so you have to be super flexible with these approaches and think on what you've got to do to each scenario it's only when you get there then start looking that you're gonna be having problems Even these meeting situations should be dealt with in the same way. Not sure, so I'm going to slow it down into first, cycle down through one of the stages and then keep things moving after. If I give myself think time, I might be able to keep it moving, but then someone pulls out and then you're able to again cycle down. So it happens in all scenarios where you've got to think ahead and be ready to do something with your car to then accommodate. So the key to doing this successfully is to look at more than the space between you and the giveaway. Look at the whole roundabout. I knew my gap was coming from an age away. But you imagine the difficulties if you do that once you arrive at the giveaway line. Is that something that you do? Are you worried about overshooting that giveaway line? Well, let's just remind you of this, that you only need that giveaway line if you've got a giveaway. So it depends on other road users. You need to look at what's happening. After you've recognized that the giveaway is there, you need to look at what's happening and plan what you've got to do. The giveaway line tells you nothing of actually what you need to do. It only tells you where you've got to give way, not whether you've got to give way. So what I'm doing, I'm hedging the bets because, as what's happened, the lights are going to change. So you can use your anticipation of traffic lights um, to try and help with this planning. If uh, you haven't seen any of my videos on traffic light sensors or the flow of other vehicles, um, check them out. But I'm putting it into first gear now because I saw the gap from that right hand side. So you have an idea that it might be us. Again, don't get to traffic lights and then start thinking. Now, I hope that's been useful. I hope that it actually gets out and helps more than just learner drivers. Um, I'm pretty sure that it's going to help a few instructors as well in the way that I've explained it. Like I said, I'm always evolving, I'm always finding different little ways to teach. I explain something on a particular day, it might go poorly, it wasn't really um, understood well enough or the, the actions from the pupil um, weren't positive enough didn't understand it well enough so I'll find a different way of doing things and I'm constantly thinking and tweaking how I teach so this is something that all my students have been head wrecked with over the last little bit and all the instructors who I'm teaching they're getting all this information and it seems to calm people down and people are then less reactive they are um, calmer because they're not snatching at gears trying to quickly work out what to do they've got an idea before they get there so try it out yourself let me know in the comments um, what you think and how successful it is to get you planning keep safe everyone i'll see you soon